John okay. Stocker, winner of the Suffolk Backyard Ultra 2021. Thank you for talking to us in One Archer. Um, yeah, just, well, it is just a, a, a wow. Did you think, did you start the race with this in mind, that you were going to win it or that you were going to break the world record? Oh, there's, there's two there. One, I did go to the race thinking that I'd win it because at registration, you asked how many laps have you come to do? And my one single answer every time, and I've only been there twice, and both times my one answer would be, I will do as, as many laps as everyone else, plus one more. And that's what I went there to do. And that was the only thing I went there to do, was to do as many laps as everyone else, plus one more. I had no, I had no idea before going to the race about the, the English record, and I had no idea that there was a world record. I, I may be a little bit thick to the idea, but I, I didn't know laps and records or that wasn't on my radar. My only radar was to go there and do one more lap than anyone else. That's a pretty good strategy. I'll, I'll admit that. Um, <laughs> who, is, who is John Stocker? What, where, where have you come from and what have you okay. done? Tell us about you. Okay, so I've always been here. Um, but mainly um, I'm a husband, I'm dad of three, as I keep quoting to everyone, my children, and my children are everything because uh, they, they mean everything. Um, I've been, we, we got hit hard, quite hard as a family with COVID. Uh, we used to own a health club and during COVID on the first wave, we lost our family business of 10 years. Uh, we lost everything and it reignited my life again, I guess. It gave me my life back with my kids. I used to work 24 seven, seven days a week. I used to go to work half five in the morning. I came home at half nine in the evening and I saw them if they popped to the health club to say hello to me and that was it. Um, and I, I wasn't seeing them in what I should have seen them. Um, so with COVID, it gave me a chance to re reevaluate my life. And uh, now I'm a personal trainer. I'm still doing what I do and what I love doing is training and helping people reach their goals and their dreams and training with great clients, but also seeing my kids in the morning when they wake up um, and putting them to bed at night as well. I've missed that for too many years and I'm making up for that now. Oh. And that gives me a chance to train as well. Yes. Oh, well, that's that's great news. That's, that's lovely to hear. Um, well, you're mentioning your children. You, I, I saw on social media you said that you... You entered the race in order to show them that there are no boundaries. Was that sort of always, was that a strategy in the back of your head? Is that how you approach ultras, that there are no boundaries? I don't think you should set a, a limit. For the backyard race especially, um, talking to a lot of competitors when going around in the loops, they were asking how far I had in planned and my plan was one more loop than anyone else. And a lot of people had planned to go to the 24 hours or the 100 miles or the 12 hours. The only problem is when you get to that goal, you've, you've reached your goal. Where do you go? Your, your mindset is then empty. You haven't got that next stage to go to. For me and my children, um, I just want to make them proud. Um, I want to show them that they don't have to be the fastest. They don't have to be the quickest. But as long as they get out there and try, that's all I want them to do. And that's not just my kids. It's talking to their friends as well. And that's kids in general. I just want them to get out there and, and give it a go. They don't have to be the best of the best to do it. They can be an everyday person like myself, but just get out there and give it a go. And you never know, your mindset might be strong enough to drag you through to breaking a world record. Fantastic. Um, so, well, that answers my next question, which was, did you have a plan of how far you were going to go? But that's, um, that, that makes total sense. Um, did, did you have any specific strategy that you used to keep you going or uh, to, to get you getting up again at, at every lap? Or is that where Matt came in and, and the competitiveness? Yeah, I guess um, to start with, there were runners there that I knew from the previous year. And it was great because we, it was a catch up. It was great to see people. I love running with other people. Uh, 
it's my downfall. If you look at maybe my DUV stats, it hasn't got places that have come. But if you look at who I'm running with, I love to go to races and I'm quite happy to run mid-packed, backpack. I'm quite happy to run along with people as long as they're enjoying it and I'm enjoying it. It's, it's great fun. Um, for me, it was a social thing to start with. We got through the first 24 hours. And it wasn't until we all came together after 24 hours did I then um, run along with Matthew. I knew Matthew before because I've been with him at Spartathlon um, and he is a phenomenal athlete. And I knew that if he had the right mindset, he would go far. I didn't know how far this was going to go. Um, but um, with the rules of the race being that you can only keep going until number two drops um, and you're only allowed to do one more lap, then I knew I, I had to stay, I had to stay mentally strong and I had to keep going because I knew Matthew would as well. Okay, yeah, interesting. Do you think without Matthew, you would have, well, kept going and done lap 38 and then that would have yeah, been. because the, the, rule, the rules of the race would have stated that you could have only done that one extra lap. So if he had stopped on lap 37, I would have only been allowed to do lap 38. So with this in mind, it, it really says that you need that number two mm. to push it to the next level. Um, okay. And without that number two, there, there would have been no record. There would have been no race. There would have been nothing. So without Matthew, there would have been no British or world record. No, no. Well, that's, uh, yes, so really, that leads on to my next sort of question, really, is that the format of the race relies on at least two. I mean, presumably you could have three or four. So. You've got to be evenly matched, haven't you? Yes. Yes, evenly matched, I think, physically, but more so mentally, because it's, it's the dark hours. This, this time of year is great because... When we did in October last year, there was 12 hours of darkness. That was hard. Um, this time of year, there was only five hours of darkness. Five loops, five loops of darkness. You can get through those with head torches and it's good fun. And on that fifth loop, dawn's breaking, the dawn chorus is going, everything's coming back alive again in the body. You're waking up again, you're ready for a next day of running. So five hours of darkness, not too bad. Yes, well, that, uh, that, that makes a big difference, doesn't it? Massive. Um, what have you been doing to recover since then? Um, I've been running again. Um, <laughs> I, I got back. I had. Um, I got back home early hours of Wednesday morning. Um, I took Wednesday. I took four days off, and then um, I started running again on Sunday. So I ran Sunday, five miles Sunday, six miles uh, Monday, Tuesday, and I've just come back from my first ten miler back from uh, Wendover Woods. So a little bit of hill training as well, just yeah. to get the legs back in it as well. Uh, because they can't rest. Oh, what, oh, they can't rest. Have you got something else, uh, your, your eyes on something else then or? Well, my next, uh, I've got four weeks now and I'm off to Wales to run in the 100 Dragon Slayer with uh, um, a very good friend, Bruce. Uh, it's his first 100. So I'm going to go along and uh, Make sure he makes that 100 and enjoy the atmosphere of him crossing that line on his first ever 100. And then the following weekend, I'm off to do the Lakeland 50 with my wife because she's waiting to do that one for a few years now. So we're in the Lakeland 50. Um, and then after that, that leads me to August. Um, nothing in August or September, but maybe something big in October. Okay. Watch this space. Um, how... Uh, were you affected by sleep deprivation? Any tips I, there? Yeah, no, I, so sleep deprivation in the race, I'm not too bad, I didn't sleep at all in the race. So for the three days I didn't sleep at all, I couldn't. Um, wow. I timed my stops to only have 13 minutes stops. So they were, they were quite precise. It was enough to get food in or enough to tend to any blisters or anything, but no sleep. Since being home, I've, I think the same as when I did the spine race, um, I've suffered with the sweats um, again, um, once or two evenings straight, um, and then I haven't had a full night's sleep yet. Um, I've woke up three or four times, mainly with pain in ribs. I, I took a bad tumble, um, and I think I've, I've bruised the ribs slightly, so just turning over in bed wakes me up at the moment. Hopefully soon I'll get a full night's sleep. 
you think is that a, a sort of physiological thing where the system is just out and it just yeah i think the system's out and it's just recharging the body now and it's it's just getting back to normal again okay wow um how did you feel yeah doing that 81st lap i mean that that's obviously you've described the first bit but once you realize once you'd got up from your fall and once you realized that you were going to make it and knowing um, what it meant yeah it, it it meant so much because it meant that i could i could call i could call home and tell them i've made it you could stop and not have to worry about that 80 second loop um coming in the the whole of the locals had come out and uh, uh, the local area had come and joined in with it as well and it was phenomenal coming into the finish and there was locals there lining it uh, applauding on the way in and it was it was absolutely phenomenal um i don't think it's sunk in even now what has happened that weekend because as i said i went there to run a race i didn't go there to break a world record or do any of that but um, to me, it was just, it was 337 miles of a long race. Um, I think if I had to get ready for loop 82, I would have been there ready on the start line for loop 82 and we would have gone again. Because your mindset was, was there. I mean, the One way you've given you that, that's probably from what you've told me, your strategy of I'm going there to do the same as everyone else, but one more loop you've sort of you've nailed it with that just that whole mindset in, in a way it has to be that way because yeah. if not you've, you've closed your you've closed your goal in too much um i i only ever went there i went there last year to do one more loop and we came away with a win at 41 laps which is crazy that the year before it was one in 41 laps and this year it's taken 81 laps yeah that is me and, me and Matthew, we were head to head. Um, we stayed head to head in that for 44 loops on our own. So there was more loops on our own yes. than what the rest of the field did with 37. I mean, it is, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in, isn't it? A lot of loops. To, to, it's a lot of loops. It is a lot of loops and it's a lot, uh, yes, as you say, to take in what actually you've achieved and what both of you achieved. Um, very much so without Matthew as I said it would never been achieved we 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 started running together at loop 37 uh, we were told by the race instructor or the race um, coordinator Linley that the bridge record was at 67 I think it was um, and we could make that so we knuckled down through the night and we we ran together um, sometimes some bit apart but mostly together we broke British record and then the carrot got dangled in front of us that it was nine more loops to break the world record, which I'd never even heard of. That only got set, I think, a few months beforehand. Um, right. Yes. So was, yeah. I don't think I don't think anyone knew there was a world record. I didn't know there was a world record in it, but there was a world record set by a gentleman, um, and uh, we had that dangled in front. So we we went back out and we worked together. We ran together until we broke that world record. I think then at that point, both of us looked to each other to say, how many more we are we willing to do? And that's when I think it then started to become then, instead of working together, become more again, a race. Right. Wow. That is it. So really, you just ran, you ran 30 laps together through the night, yeah. uh, just by yourselves. That's incredible. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Um, you obviously like the long stuff. Uh, mm. Looking looking at your record a little bit, um, as you say, you, you mentioned Sparta, you ran with Matt at Spartathlon 2018, was it? Um, Monarch's Way, I'm another one of yeah. Lindley's bonkers ones. Um, the Thames Ring. Um, why so long? Um, I think I, I seem to do better on the longer stuff. Um, I don't know if it's because it's mindset and I'm able just to blank off and not worry and just stay more conscious space. Um, I'm more of a, if it's tortoise and hare, I am definitely the tortoise, um, but just a very stubborn tortoise that doesn't want to stop. Um, I find it's, it, it allows me because I keep telling my kids about the boundaries and everything. So it's, 
it's again the pushing of the boundaries and seeing where you can go to not being told that you can only go to 100 miles um that you there is that extra there's that more beyond that and it is trying to push those limits and trying to push those boundaries further and, and just seeing what's capable what you're able to do i go out there to try and just see how far i can go to make to make one of my kids proud but also just to try and keep going wow um uh, yeah is your training any different to someone who says who say just just wants to do a hundred mile run just a hundred miles um i might do if i was if i was doing a um, hundred mile i'd probably do a bit more speed work um, i don't do a lot of speed work but Compared to that, I, I try to do minimum of 10 miles a day throughout the week. And on top of that, longer runs at weekends. We mix in with strength work and core work as well. So really see, no, it may be slightly different on the taper, um, maybe not as many miles out on the legs, but apart from that, my 100 mile work would be about the same as what I'm doing now compared to my longer work. Um, but it's just consistency. I think as long as you've got consistency within your training, um, and you keep those miles going in in the week and at weekends and you stay constant with your training then I think you're fine. Are you going to use that golden ticket? There's that October question wasn't there? Ah See, that's so, October is it okay? There's October. Okay um, yes. Just like anyone else I've had to wait for payday. Payday's just come today and later today there will be news that yes, John Stocker is accepting the golden ticket and I'm going to look to go over to Big Dog's backyard and see what we can produce over there. So That's there'll be a race exciting. of people hopefully to watch in October. Um, I know longest, Matthew's- Sorry, what's, what's Matthew's the longest day gone? Uh, the longest day gone, I think, I think that might have been where the 70, 75 laps was produced, uh, was at Big Dog's. Uh, I think that's maybe where the record was set previously. I'm not sure. Um, but um, my, my hopes would be, I hope, to break the 100. But it takes a second person. Okay. You need that second person. I think I'm strong enough. I think my head's strong enough to get to 100 loops. I think that's the next goal. We've hit 81. It's only 19 more hours. 100 loops would be a lovely place to finish it. And to see, to see if we can break that 100 would be nice. But you have to, in that uh, format, you, you need yes. someone else. So yeah. I'm hoping over there is, is that second person willing to push that long and that far. I, I don't know what the course is like over there. Um, I've only ever been to America once before. Um, so it'd be quite interesting to go. Um, I'm a, I'm a nobody at the moment and to go over to there and meet with all these massive ultra runners is is huge in my head that's blowing my head already just to they are think all going to be wanting to see you I don't think so but I'll, I'll be on the same course with Courtney DeWalter I'll, I'll be there I'll be going around just getting selfies of everybody that's all um <laughs> but apart from that um that's to get nice. there because of COVID taking away the family business um it's hit us quite hard so I've, yeah. I've never had it before, but I think the only way I'm going to get there is probably I'm, I'm going to have to do something like a GoFundMe page just to see if everyone can help. Um, I know Linley pays my entry to cost to the race, so that's brilliant, and donates money towards travel costs. I just need to raise some money to make sure we can get over there, obviously get kit when we're there for the race um, and go from there. So later today, I'll probably be launching that as well. Well, um... Do you know what? I have no doubt you're going to hit whatever target you need. I think there'll be loads of people out there who will be more than willing to help you and, and get behind you. There's Fingers crossed. Both money and kit, definitely. Um, well, um, all I can say is thank you and all the very best. Thank you. Um, send me your GoFund link and I will share it on Run Ultra and do what thank you very can much. on our side as well. Um, and thank you for talking to us. And I'll see no you worries. in the I'm... lakes. I'm doing the 100. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, oh we'll bump into you at the Lakeland. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yes, <laughs> All right, John, thank you for talking. Thank you very much. All the best. Bye bye. Thank you.